but can you understand where we're coming from that you know would like to know what you could tell us about his status with the team and where things are maybe moving forward yeah yeah i, I don't have a problem i didn't have information to tell you yesterday yeah. this isn't something that usually um it's not like injuries where i, I won't share it um you know, right now he's he's not with us um has entered the transfer portal um had a meeting with him uh yesterday and that's that's kind of where we're at. The uh, the whole thing you've discussed the transfer portal and the dynamic it brings. How difficult has that made it for kind of coaching staffs at this point? Because the thing everything seems to get out there where it didn't before. Yeah, I, you know, I guess where I, I I struggle with it. I know there's people on, on both sides of, of the fence, um, but I do believe strongly that college athletics, and athletics probably in general, but specifically college athletics, um, I felt like really taught adversity and battling through things. You know, and, and, and that's, this has changed that dynamic. And I think they're the, they're the best stories to me, is the guys that have battled through it. Um, you know, I think about Mike Kosicki. You know, if, if Mike Kosicki, if we had the transfer portal when Mike Kosicki was here, would would it have played out the way it did? Which he had a really tough year. Um, he battled through it. He came back, had an unbelievable year. And I just saw the other day, caught a touchdown pass. You know, uh, the Miami Dolphins graduated. Awesome. You know, before my time, I think about Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson had three catches his first year. I think he had. 87 or something the next year and 93 the year after that so I, I get uh, both perspectives but the problem is is it doesn't really go the way it's played out and I'm not talking specific just I'm talking a big picture now guys are being recruited that's happening um, you know and it's and it's not supposed to happen um, the other thing I would say is this all started with the graduate transfer which was supposed to be for academic purposes. It's not. I grew up in, in college football and the NCAA where everything started based on academics, and we're so far past that now. Um, you know, and I'm not, I, I, I'm not even sitting here saying that I necessarily agree or disagree with it. It's just so different than the college football and the college athletics and the NCAA that I grew up with. Um, it was it started with academics and it ended with academics and everything else was a bonus. Um, and it's just changed. The model has changed. So um, I, I will tell you this, I want nothing but success for him and his, and his family. Um, I want that for all of our guys. But I also know the journey is different. The journey is different for all of them. And I think sometimes guys come in and they expect the journey to play out a certain way. And when it doesn't, that's hard. But that, that's, that's life. You know, that's, that's, how, that's how life goes. So, um, so. James, how, how the reps shaking out between Will and Sean at this point? Uh, yesterday it was about 50-50. Uh, today it was, it, was, it was skewed considerably towards Will. How important do you think Saturday will be to Will's like future development down the line if he does? Yeah, I mean, obviously, whenever you play, it helps. You know, whenever you play, it, it gives you an opportunity to, to um, you know, experience things that you try to prepare for in practice. But you know, there there comes a point where you, you need you need that game reps. Uh, he's been able to get some of that. Some sometimes it's cleanup duty and. The other day, in a in a really ideal situation for a backup quarterback to get his first significant time on the road in front of 102,000 against the number one team, you know, in the country, um, and and really handled, you know, it for the most part really well. So yeah, there's va there's definitely value in it, no doubt. Jim, clarify with just because of the timing. You could still choose to come back. You could still be welcome back, or is that the end? We, we we have uh, er, that's the other thing that's probably that's a little bit I think problematic with the transfer portal is everybody can handle it differently. 
So the problem is to say, well, this school's handled it this way and this school's handled it that way. In my opinion, it should be consistent across the board. So there is no gray area and confusion. Um, but we have very clear protocol that we have now that after that first wave got together with the leadership council and the coaches and really had a discussion about what we think is fair for the players and what we think is fair for the program and be very clear on the front end. Everybody knows what that is. And then everybody can determine how they want to, um, you know, kind of work within that system. So um, everybody clearly understands it. So is it, I believe you said over the summer that, you know, you can come back, but it's up to you if you want to take the scholarship away in the meantime. Is that yeah, again, it's hard for me to sit here unless I go through our policy in detail and there's a lot of points to it. Um, and and also, it's not like a black and white deal. Every, every situation is different based on how they leave, how they communicate, um, you know, why they're leaving. There's, there's a lot of factors that go into it. James, you've talked before about perception when it comes to the program, the university, all that stuff. Given last night where you only dropped one spot in the college football playoff now that we're towards the end, but all this other stuff is happening with Justin and uh, the outside the lines piece, how much does that weigh on you, maybe not now, but in a couple of days or in a couple of weeks with the perception of where the program is and given where we had that long conversation of where you want it to be? Yeah, I, I, um, I, think, I think pretty good. I mean, I think one of the things that really jumps out is you, you think about strength of schedule uh, for us specifically. Um, you could probably check about five or six different services that do those rankings. I think we're ranked anywhere from first um, to 10th um, in like three or four different types of uh, rankings depending on which one you use. So we've played a really good schedule. People respect that. Um, we've played a number of ranked teams uh, at home and on the road. Um, so. You know, I, I think that's why you've seen people kind of respect you know, our schedule and the rankings have have uh, uh, have shown that. Um, but also, I could I could show you five other examples of other teams that I think should be ranked certain places and they're not. So for me to sit here and say I completely understand it, I don't. It's working out fairly well for us right now. So uh, you know, obviously we're happy about it. But we got to play well uh, on Saturday and you know see where we fall after that. James, after the game Saturday, Cam said that he pours his heart into this team more than in more ways than people would know. So, what has Cam meant to this team, both with his on-field production and from a leadership perspective? Yeah, it's all the stuff behind the scenes. Um, it's it's the leadership, it's the mentoring, the younger players, it's it's mentoring certain personalities, it's great feedback to Coach Pry and, and to myself. Um, it's all of it, you know. And and what's interesting is. It's kind of like being a head coach, or kind of like being a first-time play caller, or, or you know, being a captain. Is is I think when you're young, you view what being a captain is, and then you actually do it, and it's a lot more than that. You know, there's a lot more that goes into it. If you're going to be a guy like Cam, and really appreciate and take pride in that role and that responsibility, you carry it. You wake up, you're the captain. You go to sleep, you're the captain. You're the captain Saturday night. Um, you know, when guys are out downtown, that's that's part of it. And guys like Cam have really embraced all of that, you know, and uh, uh, got tremendous respect from the staff and, and his teammates. You mentioned last week, I think it was, that the, the playoff system kind of ruins people's ability to like bowl games and be excited about seasons that may have otherwise been appreciated. How do you message a team through having a good year when maybe, you know, end of the day, you don't have enough in the playoffs, but it doesn't mean you had a bad year. How do you get them to that point? Yeah, I think the way I, I kind of expressed it is it's, it's, it's kind of become all or nothing, you know, for, I wouldn't say for every program, but for a lot of programs, it's become all or nothing, uh, you know, with the fan bases and the perception and things like that. Um, I, I think for us, Ben, I don't want to give you guys the same answer all the time, but that's why we approach things the way we approach them. Um, because all those things are outside of your control. The noise outside is, is, is outside of your control. So trying to keep our process and our approach and um, how we go about our business consistent um, helps. It doesn't eliminate it, but it limits it a little bit. Uh, and that's, that's what we're trying to do. Um, 
You know, I think at the end of the day, if you look at besides the playoffs, you look at the number of teams that are able to get to nine wins, there's not many. The number of teams that are able to get to 10 wins, there's, there's even less and 11, and you know, you kind of get into a whole other category. So um, I think it helps. But I, I will tell you that we have very high expectations and standards around here, um, not only outside, but even more so inside. Uh, so that's hard. And that's where when you do have a setback or you do face adversity, you got to deal with it. You got to deal with it quickly. And I think that's also where the Sundays are really important. Because if you wait till Monday, that it just lingers with you a little bit longer. That's where, to be honest, you know, I went to Chris about it. I'd love to have my press conference on Monday because it allowed me to allowed me to move on. I don't want to come back on Tuesday and, and talk to you guys about it, if that makes sense. But the problem is, by NCAA rules, Monday's a day off, and if I did it Monday, then the players couldn't do it. So you guys wouldn't, wouldn't want that. So, um, but I, I think that's, that's important. How do you think Parker's done in his first year here? Good, yeah. Uh, I think Jared's been, been great. Um, he's a great teammate in terms of in the office. Uh, with the coaching staff and, and contribution, he's really good from a culture guy, from a, a culture standpoint. Um, fundamentally, he's really, really good. You know, I think the challenge sometimes with assistant coaches, and we've had turnover at that position, which is which is not ideal. It's kind of like when a head coach is hired and he comes in, and as much as he embraces all the players. There's always this feeling that when your first recruiting class comes in, that they're your guys, and the other guys aren't. As much as you fight that and try to embrace it, there's just there's a there's a bond that is built when you go into someone's home and you recruit them and their parents and they commit to you. Um, and then when you have multiple coaching changes at one position, uh, you got to battle like crazy to to build that bond. And then obviously when you don't have success and that bond and relationship is not there, it's hard to work through some of those challenges. Um, that's why at the end of the day, you guys, you guys know, um, my, my philosophy um, always has been and always will be overall overarching philosophy for the entire program is relationships. It's all got to be about relationships with the staff, with the players, with everybody that comes in contact with our players um, and that, that I come in contact with, everybody better be pouring their hearts and souls into the program and most importantly the players because there are going to be tough times and the only way to get through those tough times is if you have really strong relationships. Can you update us on Ricky's status? I think we forgot to ask yesterday. He's back. Yeah, he's back. He's back. Full go. Um, bump in the road. Uh, Ricky's, I think Ricky has been in a tough situation this year um, and has really handled it well. And these guys got so many voices in their ears and stuff like that. Um, I, I believe again, and again, maybe maybe I'm crazy, but I, but I believe that this adversity that Ricky's gone through this year will help him. I, I, you know, I know I'm probably crazy and I know probably some people are going to say I'm old school, but I would love for everybody's path to be smooth and, uh, and you know, no setbacks and no adversity. But um, I also know the adversity helps. I know the adversity helps me. I'm a different guy now than I was nine years ago. I'm a different guy than when I first showed up. Um, I, don't, I don't like to go through it, the adversity. I don't like the criticism. I don't like the tough losses, but I know I know I get better from them because of, of how I approach it, and it makes you appreciate all the other stuff. Thank you, Coach. Hey, thanks, 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 thanks. 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 Th